Welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham. This is going to be a comprehensive overview of the stroke panel. If you open the stroke panel and this is all you see, go to Show Options to expand it. The first field is for the stroke weight and you can use the pull down menu to choose some of the preset widths or you can click in the field and use the up or down arrow keys to change it, adding the shift key to move in increments of 10. Or, and this is a new interface feature in CS6, you can just use your mouse's scroll wheel to change the increments. Just hover over the field and scroll up or down. The cap of the stroke is set to but by default, meaning the stroke doesn't extend beyond the point. You can also set it to be rounded or projecting, and this just means that Illustrator adds half the width of the stroke to the end. Corners can be mitered, which is like a picture frame, or rounded or beveled. The limit field has to do with the point at which Illustrator bevels the corners. If I scroll all the way down to 1, you can see that the corners are now beveled. Here's an illustration of this concept. The dashed lines are spaced 30 points apart, which is the width of the red stroke. The corner limit on the left object is set to 4, which means that if the corner point extends 4 times the size of the stroke, it will be mitered. This one doesn't, so it remains pointy. On the right, the miter limit is set to 1, so it gets mitered off. If I increase the limit, it becomes pointy again. So this can be useful if you have a zigzag line and the corner points are a little out of control and extending off your artboard, you can choose when to miter them. On a closed path, you can choose how to align the stroke. By default, the stroke is aligned to the center of the path, so if I have a 20 point stroke, 10 points are on one side and 10 are on the other. You can also align the stroke to the inside, or have all 20 points aligned on the outside. You can add a dashed line to your path. If you enter just a value for the size of the dash and nothing else, Illustrator simply makes the gaps the same size. Here I have a 1 point dash with a 20 point gap, and if I leave the other fields blank, Illustrator will just repeat these settings. You can alternate thick and thin by changing the values in the dash field, or you can enter something different in all of the fields for a different look. You can make a dotted line by adding a round cap, and the size of the dots will change depending on the width of your stroke. When you have a dashed line applied to a closed path, you might get some funky looking corners where the dashes don't meet up. Well, you can click on this button to align the dashes to the corners so everything's nice and neat. If I reduce the width of this stroke, you can see that Illustrator will even distribute the dashes across the corners so that everything is aligned. There may be times when you don't want them aligned, and you can always choose the other method. This works with any closed path, like a star. I'll hide the edges so you can see it better, or even a curved closed shape. Before version CS5, you had to use the effects to add arrowheads, but now it's on the stroke panel, which makes more sense. To add an arrowhead, you simply choose one from the drop-down menu. You can scale it here and get exactly the look you're after, and if you want it on the other end, you can just click this icon to switch it. You can add different kinds of arrowheads to each end, and there's quite a nice selection, not all of them arrows. You can scale each end individually by unchecking the lock icon so you can fine-tune the look. And if you decide that you don't want the arrowhead after all, just choose None from the drop-down menu. You can set where you want the arrowhead to start, either placing the tip at the end of the path or extending it beyond. Lastly, you can change the width profile of a stroke here. You can choose from any of the presets, and you can flip them along the path by clicking this icon. If you use the Width tool to create your own profile, you can save it to your library by adding it here. Now you can use this profile on other strokes, not just in this document, but in any other document you create. And if you need to delete it, just select it and click the trash can. Alright, I hope that's everything you needed to know about the stroke panel.